Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, depending on where you are in the world, this is either Morning Coffee or someone did mention yesterday that this, that that you being in uh, in London, I think you said you were in. Um, this is your afternoon tea. Um, I love that. Whenever, hey, whenever during the day, you know, you're catching this, have a cup of coffee, have a cup of tea, have a cocktail, whatever. Just enjoy. This is your daily reading, yes? This is a daily energy reading, and it is a general reading, yeah? Hi. I need chapstick. <laughs> um, I needed a... My lips were a little dry. Okay, but well, this is a general energy reading, all right? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is not specific to anything. Love, career, sign, nothing like that. This is just literally what spirit wants to discuss with us today, yes? Um, and keep in mind, time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. So um, this doesn't have to resonate for the 14th of August. This could resonate at any time for you, yeah? Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind, I think... Earlier in the week, I said that there was going to be no morning coffee today on Wednesday. I misspoke. There's going to be no morning coffee tomorrow. I had gotten my, my schedule a little mixed up and ended up thinking that I was going to be working more than I thought. And it turns out that I wasn't, which was great. It was such great news because today and tomorrow are those days that are going to be really brutal for me. So I'm working a night shift from like 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. tonight. And then I'm working a day shift from like 9.30 a.m. to like 6 or 7 p.m. tomorrow. Um, so that's why there's going to be no morning coffee because I have tomorrow morning because I have like... By the time I'll get out, I think I'll, I'll probably be out by... I'll be out by the latest 3 3 a.m. and then I'll have to get home, sleep for maybe like, I don't know, four hours and then get right back up and do it again um, on, on Thursday. So I'm not going to have time to do morning coffee. All right. So no morning coffee tomorrow, but we will have morning coffee for Friday. We will have our weekend edition. Yeah. All right, guys. So getting into the reading for today. Oh, also, um, I just want to point out, you guys might hear some construction going on. They are tearing down the building across the street. And it is really significant, the fact that they're tearing down this building. And I'll tell you why, because actually it's even connected to what's coming through in the cards today. Um, but but you may hear some of that construction. So um, if it gets too distracting, I apologize. But um, that's going on. So just <clears throat> keep that in mind. All right. All right, so let's get into the energies of today. So when I woke up this morning, that song on my mind was playing again. And it's that song, um, 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 I finally found what went wrong. Yes, we, I, that came out earlier in the week. I think it was Monday or something like that. Um, and I, when I woke up and I heard it, I was like, wow, that's, that's weird. Um, it feels like someone is, like we're going back and forth between things but it, to be honest it still it kind of makes sense all right so i was i was pulling the cards and i was feeling out the song and i was like okay well no this does kind of make sense and then the pre-shuffle started coming out and the first card that came out was the seven of pentacles in reverse i finally found what went wrong yes i finally found the wrong in you Ah, you see? Yes. So it does make sense, doesn't it? So what I feel like is happening here is we for some for a lot of us in some situation, whether this is a romantic situation, uh, a business situation, just something that has been a major cycle in your life, in, in like your life up until this point, that's coming to an end. Seven of Pentacles in reverse is saying, no, I see exactly what went wrong here and I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this again. Now, this could have been a situation in which you were really upset about for a while. Okay? You see, look at the look at the look on that man's face. But now it's like, no, I get it. I finally see, I finally found what went wrong. Okay? You have the world in reverse. Now it is the side of the card that makes me think that someone might be trying to rush through this process. That's just minor. That's just minor because um ultimately. The situation is closing out on its own. I literally see you 
crossing through this portal, okay? And then you have the Page of Cups again. The Page of Cups came out yesterday. The Page of Cups in, is, in, to my, in, in my opinion, or in, as far as I see here, the Page of Cups, this side of the Page of Cups, is the dreamer energy. So you're, you let something go right you're moving on you're closing out this cycle but you're focused more on what you on your dreams especially in terms of what you learned here with this seven of pentacles in reverse you're very much focused on your dreams as to what it is you want to create in the future and this really does feel like it's something brand new now it's not necessarily brand new in what it actually is for you um, it could be along the same lines of what you're leaving behind. It's just in a new circumstance. It's a new manifestation. It's something healthier, yes? Um, you also have, as the overall energy, you have the tower, all right? The tower is in reverse, though. Um, ooh, okay. Well, that just fell. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's so funny. That is so funny. All right, and then on the other side of the deck, you have... The Two of Pentacles. Now, the Two of Pentacles is also in reverse. Now, on this side of the Two of Pentacles, you see how this person is like, you know, this. I guess this young individual is juggling these two pentacles, right? And it looks like there are people up there watching him. And what I got when that when I was from this first when I first saw this card, I heard no more dog and pony show. So it's like you're not even trying to juggle, trying to keep something afloat, trying to keep up appearance, trying to keep up with something that you said that you would do in the past, but just is not working out. And now you're just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. I'm leaving this, but I'm dropping this. Done. I'm not juggling this any longer. Okay. And that's a really good thing. Now. Some things fell out here, um, revealing the Seven of Wands. So I, I, the Seven of Wands is upright. I feel like there are much stronger boundary here's, boundaries here for you than there have been in the past. You do have the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups is in reverse. I really feel like whatever it is you're moving on from right now, and keep in mind, this could be someone that you're connecting with also. It doesn't necessarily have to be you. Um, but some, wh whatever someone is moving on from, you're not upset about it any longer. You're not upset about it any longer. Five of Cups in reverse. Now, the, the tower fell out of the deck, and it fell, and it, when, it, when I looked at it, it fell upright. But I, what I really feel like is happening here is this is an old tower moment, okay? Yesterday, the tower did come out, but it was this side of the tower in which we were seeing, we were recognizing that whatever it was that was built that is now being dismantled it was hollow there was no substance to it it there was no real value to it it was just a facade right well what we're talking about here in these pre-shuffle energies you do have the tower it is in reverse but this is the uh, original side of the tower um, this is and I what I'm feeling like this is the initial moment that the tower was struck and as you went through that process, eventually you came to find out that what was being dismantled or brought down really had no substance to it anyway, okay? Now, I want to explain the significance um, of this building that they're tearing down next door because this is, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you guys. Oh, damn, look, see, there, shit, y'all, okay. Um, <laughs> the tower just came back out again, but this time it's the side where we're seeing that this inside of this tallow, this tower was hollow. Okay. So this is resonating with me. All right. Um, because it, it's resonating with what I used to think, um, the twin flame situation was and who, I, someone that I thought was a twin, was my twin flame. Now, if you guys have been following me, you know, like ever since I, I started my channel, in January of 2018 and I started it because of the twin flame influence okay and I went through damn near two years of dealing with that situation um, I mean this person he blocked me a long time ago we haven't seen physically seen each other since September of last year um, we barely spoke to each other. We barely ever spoke to each other, but I was still experiencing this really intense, intense connection, which it was just huge. Okay. It was ridiculous. Um, but I'm finally, again, with that song, I'm finally finding 
the wrong in the situation. I finally found what went wrong, okay? I finally see that this, this tower that had been built um, that I was under the impression of one thing was pretty hollow. There wasn't really anything, anything of substance in there. Now, that doesn't mean that the situation was... Um, Like there was nothing, not, nothing came out of it. Actually, something really great came out of it. It was absolutely for a purpose. Um, and I'm finally able to start letting this go. But the funny thing about this and why it's connected to this building that they're tearing down is because this building that they're tearing down, the street number of that building is 144. Yep. Now, for those of you that have been on this for a while, that had been resonating with the Twin Flame journey for a while, you know that there is a an association with the number 144. Some people believe that there's 144,000 actual twin flames out there. Others believe that 144,000 is a is an energetic frequency, okay? It, uh, is an energetic vibration that anybody really can tap into. It's I, I don't I can't really say much about it without sounding like an idiot so I'm just gonna stop there but either way it's representative of the twin flame journey and when oh I first heard of that number when I was watching um, Aluna Ash do her twin flame readings and explaining twin flames from her point of view and and I was like wow that's cool 144 blah 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 but I never even realized that the building right across the street from me was 144 I didn't realize it right away and then eventually I did but now it's being dismantled and they're literally like the, I'm I'm sitting here watching a ton of construction guys men and women tear this building down now that doesn't mean that the, the number of the space is going to change necessarily but it's just extremely symbolic because what the old the old cycle the old understanding of what you know the twin flame situation was for me specifically or for others of you the old understanding of whatever this tower moment is that's being torn down it's 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 being removed and the new understanding is making its way in Okay, that's really cool. That's really freaking cool, you guys. I hope, I, I mean, I hope that makes sense. Maybe that'll resonate with some of you, maybe it won't, but I just wanted to explain that because I, I did, because they had been actually in the process of tearing this building down for the, a few weeks now. Nine of Wands. Um, they had been a pro in the process of tearing this building down for a few weeks now, and I didn't even realize what they were really doing until now that I see that they're literally tearing it down. But with the messages that are coming through in the readings right now, it, I mean, it all makes perfect sense. Now, this Nine of Wands just wanted to come out. I'm going to talk about this really quick, and then we're going to get into the rest of the reading. But if you see here, this person is about to enter into a cave, is being beckoned to enter into a cave by this woman um i don't know you can call her a seductress if you want you can call her the divine feminine if you want um but this cave is symbolic of a birthing chamber uh this this is the nine of wands this is someone that has been you know through the ringer this is the wounded warrior card this is the card of perseverance this is my just keep swimming card yes well this guy just kept swimming and now it's time for him to enter into this cave where he can recuperate and relax and heal and emerge stronger, better, different than he was before. And that's what's happening. Good God, you guys. And then looky here, the lovers. The lovers, which is a twin flame card. Some of you could really be connecting with someone who really is much more of a counterpart than anyone else has ever been. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, for me personally, and yes, I am going to want to get back into... Um, twin flame readings. Now, I'm not going to call them that. Um, I, I'm going to. I'm going to be doing more. It's more going to be like a divine partnership thing. My whole view on the twin flame journey, divine partnership, whatnot, whatever, has really changed. I've really come to a deeper understanding. It's my own personal understanding. So if you don't resonate with it, you don't have to. Um, and I know I said this yesterday, but I actually spent a lot of yesterday just really thinking about this and meditating on it because spirit is really pushing me to do so. I'm feeling really guided to, to get back into those types of readings. But it's going to be different. And it's not just going to be for Twin Flames. It's going to be for everybody. All right? Oh, my God, you guys. Look at what just came back out. The tower. 
And it's this side of the tower. Yo, I kind of want to leave that. I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave that there. And we're going to get on to the rest of the reading now. Shuffle this one more time. All right, kids. Let's see what we've got. Let's get into this. Oh my God, that's so crazy that that card just keeps coming out. Okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For today, Wednesday, wow, August 14th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Um, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna give this three shuffles. But second of all, I was literally about to say November, right then and there, okay? Something is coming. Something is coming and that could be, it could manifest by November. It could be a little more solid by November. It could be more of a thing by November. Looky here, the Ace of Wands that popped out yesterday, it's showing itself again. This is that card, this is the side of the card where I was saying someone has gotten some sort of inspiration, right? With this side of the card that was struck by lightning in which I was also saying that this is like a minor arcana version of the tower here, right? Hanged man is underneath that, which is a good thing. But someone got the inspiration and now someone's like, yep, I want this. This is what I want. I want it. So this could have to do with what could be manifesting and could be more of a thing by November. I literally, I was about to say November 14th instead of August 14th. Like, come on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Two more shuffles here, guys, and then we'll see what we've got for today. Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Last shuffle here. And my eyes are closed. All right, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee and then we'll see what we've got. All right, guys, here we go. Best messages, please, Spirit, for the collective for Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Best messages, please. Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna do one more pass. Oh, look, there's the Empress. Do I wanna do one more? Oh, and the sun. You know what, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, Cause we're talking, we're definitely talking to, well, okay. We're talking to, we could be talking to the divine feminine here. We could be talking to those of you that resonate more with the divine feminine energy um, in the Empress. Okay, now this doesn't have to be just individuals that resonate more with the divine feminine energy. This could be someone, you could be a more of a masculine energy and yet the, the feminine energy within you is going through some sort of situation like this as well. And actually, yes, as I'm, as I'm saying that and as I'm feeling through it, this definitely could resonate with those of us that are more masculinely oriented. The feminine, we are in the age of the feminine right now, um, of the, the age of the divine feminine. We literally just crossed into it. And we've all been going through a, a, a process in which the div divine feminine was on the rise. And so for those of us that are, or yeah, those of us that are more masculinely oriented, um, the changes that you've been experiencing in your life, the awareness that you've been coming into has been directly related to the rise of the divine feminine and the and you working on healing, whether consciously or subconsciously, healing and integrating your divine feminine essence, yes? So um, everybody's really going through this. Everybody is. Now, we do have, okay, so we have the Empress here. 
And the Empress did come out yesterday, but yesterday she was facing another way, but it's okay. Now she's facing us, because now we're talking about, you know, we're talking, literally we're talking about the divine feminine essence. We're talking about the abundance. We're talking about your security, your fertility, your, um, and your, your compassion, your love, your care. No matter what you've been through over however long you've been through it, I really feel like this hasn't really killed your spirit. You're still willing to love. You're still willing to to be open and and, and have a partnership or have, you know have, be the master of your own domain, um, have you know have a family or whatnot. Um, but you're much stronger now, much wiser. Okay. And then on the other side here, you do have the sun. Everything is very clear. Um, I feel like a lot of happiness, whatever is being dismantled, whatever is being uh, let go of, released, whatnot, whatever, there is a deep sense of happiness now, a very deep sense of happiness, okay? We do have the tower here, but that is what stayed out. I kept that out, okay? Because that is definitely indicative of what, was, what is going through here and uh, what is happening here and then with the sun the sun is helping illuminate the fact that whatever tower one had built it was in fact hollow okay it wasn't it wasn't necessarily what you thought it was now i don't want anyone to think that this is a bad thing it's not a bad thing because ultimately it helped get you to where you are now it's helped get you to this divine feminine this empress state if you are more of the divine feminine individual if you're more of the masculine individual, it's helped you get to this place where you can balance and integrate more of your feminine energies, okay? Now, we do have justice here, but it's the, rever it's the other side of the card, right? So where this says justice is being served, you know, it's upright, it's, it's, it's balanced, it's good. This side is not... A fav not the most favorable side of the card, all right? This side is the side of the card. Again, I don't, I don't remember what Egyptian god this is, but it's a god of the underworld, right? And this is the god that, that um, this is an individual or this god is who um, decides whether you are consumed by the flames or you, uh, uh, or you are absolved, basically, is kind of how I understand it. But here, it looks like this individual because it could be running amok, okay? This does kind of feel like somewhat of an injustice here, but what it does feel like, what happened in this situation is that kind of darkness run, ran amok here. There wasn't much justice, okay? Um, yeah, if you, as you can see, you know, the scales of justice have been discarded. The sword has been, you know, chucked into the ground and probably has been there for a while because there are some vines growing on it. And yet there's a butterfly. What I'm getting from this side of justice here is a, a tough lesson designed by the darkness but something that we need to keep in mind is everything serves the light even darkness all right so again this is another reason why whatever you are releasing dismantling let go letting go of it was not bad it was not bad it absolutely served a purpose and that purpose love bombing Releasing some sort of love bombing, releasing some sort of emotional immaturity, releasing some sort of uh, emotional selfishness with the Knight of Cups in reverse. Emotional manipulation, something like that. That's what I'm getting with the Knight of Cups energy. Someone that was just in it for a good time, someone that was just in it for themselves while the other person was a little more serious. Um, this is also, for some of you, this Knight of Cups energy is just like dating for shits and giggles or um, dating just because or dating for convenience. However that resonates for you, I actually do want to, I'm going to, once I start, I'm going to start clarifying in a second. 
excuse me, and I'm gonna actually clarify these two in particular, but um, there's something about, there's something about a lack of maturity in love that this Knight of Cups is representing here for you that is being let go of, rejected, released, okay? All right, so we're gonna get, we're gonna get clarifying now. And I am gonna I am going to clarify these two cards specifically. I'm hearing Anubis. Is this Anubis? In this, I don't know. I really don't know. Please, put, someone, I, someone, because this came out a while ago, like a few weeks ago, um, and someone mentioned it, but I don't remember who it is now. It doesn't matter anyway. Because it does, it really doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, You know, this justice card is also giving me an energy of justice has been served. The the jury is out on this, has been out for some time. Um, and karma has been doled out. Karma's been doled out. And there's been a transformation. I mean, this butterfly here is, to me, is a really beautiful symbol in the midst of the, the scariness of this side of the card here. There's definitely been a transformation. Definitely been a transformation. And it's funny because I've been seeing, I've been seeing a lot of butterflies lately, um, mainly monarch butterflies. Um, and I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I've only lived in this area, in this part of town for like two, two years now, um, but I don't remember seeing so many butterflies before. Like, it's been a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot, uh, which is beautiful. All right, so major transformation here from the darkness into the light for sure, for sure. All right, last shuffle. Let's see, let's get some clarity here. We're gonna clarify this justice card first. So what is this justice here, spirit? What is this justice? What does this represent here for the collective? Yeah, I'm hearing that song again. I finally found what went wrong. That's enough? Okay. Oh, that's enough. All right. We've got the King of Pentacles is in reverse here with the Knight of Swords and the Hierophant. Interesting. Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords. All right. So, um, all right. So for a lot of you, Okay, so what I'm getting with this King of, the King of Pentacles has been coming out for the past three days. Um, and it, this being the third day. And, um, and it's funny because I've been watching some other readers and the King of Pentacles is coming out left and right. Specifically in this situation here, this, what I'm hearing for some of you, this is a false representation of masculine energy. This is twisted masculine energy, all right? This is someone that's, I'm hearing narcissistic, okay? But it's also someone that is very much focused on the material. It's very much about doing things the traditional way or the way that things had always been done, okay? Um, the Knight of Swords energy is an interesting one to come out with that. I, I, I'm getting some sort of battle here. Um, now, you could have been fighting against this. You may have been rushing in knight in shining armor status, like I did, or at least tried to, to um, kind of like save someone from like whatever it is that they were in. But, th but no, that was not necessary. So then it turned into just a fight for yourself. Man, am I resonating with this. But ultimately, Ultimately, it's become clear, all right? The illusion, the deception is understood now. Okay, you have, with the seven of swords here, you have someone that is carrying five swords, so change for sure, and they're leaving two swords behind. All right, you're definitely stepping out of the battle at this point. And you've learned your lesson here. 
Now this Knight of Swords could be, could have what once was an offense could now be turning into a defense. And so for some of you, you've learned what a true king of pentacles is this isn't this doesn't have to be now this could be you recognizing who a true king of pentacles is in another person or this could be recognizing what the true uh, expression of or balanced expression of a king of true king of pentacles is for you say maybe if you are more of the masculine energy okay um, now, if that's the case, I do see you kind of fighting against the establishment here with the Hierophant and the Knight of Swords energy. Um, I would caution you against really trying to fight too much. I would say fight to preserve more of your state of ind independence and autonomy than just trying to change the system. You're not going to try to change the system alone. We're all going to have to do it together, but that comes from us just being something else, basically. Okay. <laughs> um, but for others of you, like say for the feminines out there, you recognize what a true king of pentacles is. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be, you know, 100% super rich or, you know, that they necessarily have to have um, a, a, an amazing career or a ton of money or a big house or a lot of possessions. The true king of pentacles, yes, is stable, could have a, a good finances, could be working on gaining better finances, but the biggest thing that the King of Pentacles represents is stability, is knowing oneself, is being solid in oneself, regardless of what the finances look like at that moment. Does that make sense? I mean, everybody has their ups and downs, their ebbs and their flows, but if you are, but a true King of Pentacles is solid throughout all of that can weather any sort of storm. The King of Pentacles is your rock, is your stability. Yes? That's what the true King of Pentacles is. So I do feel like the justice has been served here. The, the, the lesson has been learned as to what type of King of Pentacles you actually want to embody or you want to have in your life. That is beautiful. So now, yes. Um, and the deception is done with. The deception of the Seven of Swords. I really see you moving on completely with the Seven of Swords, okay? Excuse me, guys. Oh, okay. So now let's talk about this Knight of Cups energy. Now, this Knight of Cups energy could be someone coming in that wants to... I'm hearing the dreamer again. It could be someone that coming in that wants to offer you something, wants to offer some sort of love, some sort of affection. But you might not be quite ready for it yet. They might not be quite ready for it yet. But also, this, this Knight of Cups energy is like a, an emotional immaturity. Love bombing, um, selfishness, emotionally selfish... Um, it's just being released. What do we have here? The Six of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, Two of Wands. Okay. Two of Wands is underneath the deck. Now, you may have felt some sort of bond, some sort of soulmate bond here with this Six of Cups energy in terms of this Knight of Cups. But your your choice to stay connected to that was coming from a place of lack, lack mentality. I have no idea what just happened, but uh, like the last two minutes of that video got cut out because my mic, my mic just turned off out of nowhere. Um, and the video just stopped recording. I, that was so weird. That's so weird. Um, but so what I was saying was, you know, for some of you, 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 you were connected, you stay connect, stayed connected to this Knight of Cups energy because of, yes, you felt, you felt a soulmate bond with this individual, and yet there was still a sense of lack mentality that was keeping you connected to this. And it, you had to learn, you had to learn self-worth. You had to be able to look at this person and say, look, I have, I know I feel something with you, but I am not going to put myself in a position in which I am less than, or I feel like I'm less than, or I have to be less than I truly am just to be with you. 
That was a big lesson to learn in this situation. And now because of that, well, actually not because of that, but mainly you had to make a choice. Do I choose my self-worth with one wand? Or do I choose and, and my self-worth, which could bring me something brand new, which could give me anything in the world that I could ever desire, or do I stick with what I know? Stay in a lack mentality saying, well, you know, I have this soulmate bond with this person and we already have this established energy, so I guess I should just, you know, stick with it, blah, blah, blah. But no, not if they're going to treat you like shit. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So then now also there's something else that's coming through with this Knight of Cups energy because I do feel like there is someone on the horizon here for you that has some sort of deep feelings for you. And I feel like you might have some deep feelings for them too. You do in fact feel this soulmate bond, this deep connection, this familiarity with this person, okay? This could be someone new that maybe, um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have you know, past life history with this person, but you do have this sense of familiarity with them and they feel that with you. And yet there, th an offer is not necessarily coming through. I keep hearing it's on the horizon. Okay, the offer isn't necessarily coming through just yet because of some sort of lack mentality still. Now, this is more on the masculine side. Um, I do feel like it's the masculine here that doesn't necessarily feel like they're quite good enough or maybe they're quite ready. And if that's the case, I highly recommend masculines that you go back and you check yesterday's reading because we talked about this. You are, in fact, good enough. Even though you're, you're, you may not necessarily be in that king of pentacles state just yet in terms of your finances and your career or whatnot, you are, in fact, still worthy, okay? There's more to the king of pentacles than than just his money. It's his stability, it's his groundedness, it's his knowing who he is as a person and what he wants as a person. He is that stable, and I, I feel like I said this already, but maybe it got cut off, I don't, whatever. But he is that stable, grounded energy that can weather any storm, okay? And that's truly, honestly, that's more of what the feminine would want than the money. If she's really balanced in her feminine energy, she doesn't really need money, she can make her own money, you know, she's good, but. She wants someone that can weather the storm with her, that can be her rock, all right? And that's who a true King of Pentacles is. But I wanna get some clarity from the Lenormand deck in terms of this love offer or this relationship that is in fact on the horizon here. Oh, wow, the anchor. Ooh, settling down much? Wow. Oh, what is this? The sun and the mountain. Okay. I do have to get to the book, but we're going to see here. We're going to start with 35, the anchor. Um, yeah. St yeah. With stability and security, I bring peace of mind. I push you to preserve and help you reach your goal. Watch out for negative cards. They may shackle and pull you down a hole. Interesting. The anchor offers stability and security, being confident that your hard work will pay off in the long term. The anchor of the reverie is adorned with two fish symbolizing abundance and wealth in the Lenormand. This card is of assurance. You are protected in times of need. I, I'm really getting a strong sense of wanting to settle down here. Really, the sun. I am success, hear me roar. I control your ego and charisma. I boost your confidence and courage. I bring victory and glory, but be careful not to get too cocky or you will be burned by arrogance like Icarus. The solar, the solar face as the moon that follows carries the essential nature of this card as a blessing, success and big luck. In this card, we also see a scroll of time. As the sun marks the passing of hours, the shadow falls upon the number six, a solar number. The sun shines and everything under its light grows. The, card, the, the cards around this card in a reading will be well aspected and embodes well at the end of the line of cards too. 
You see, the light that shines from this sun card is energizing and, re and revitalizing in nature. It can also signify the confidence to step out into the light by engaging with a project or taking a new direction. If you're feeling any sort of apprehension, go for it. This is a strong bond here. Do not let lack mentality get in the way. If this is a bond for you, if this is someone on the horizon that, that, is, that truly feels like a soulmate to you, truly feels, I don't know, like soul family or something like that, that you have this deep connection with, that you feel this familiarity with, that you feel comfortable with, don't let lack mentality stand in your way, okay? You may still be in the process of getting back on your feet, but that's okay. That doesn't mean you're not worthy, all right? And finally, you have the mountain which is uh, overall energy. The mountain, I come to bring you challenges and obstacles with blockages and resistance. I will make you late for your date and my coldness will take emotions off the plate. Pay attention and beware, I can be the enemy in your lair. The mountain is symbolic of obstacles in your way. Whilst it may be there to be conquered, as we see from the animal looking upon the mountain, it is certainly in our way. In reverie, the mountain appears to us as an almost impossible obstacle, including with its origins as a card of detour, slowing us down. In fact, when combined with other cards, it shows that we might abandon our planned route and take another path. Let's see. Other cards are still in nature. Okay. Anyway, um, what I'm seeing with the mountain here is yes, this is not, there, there are definitely some obstacles that need to be faced, okay? It's not going to be easy, but if, this is, if you're looking for some sort of stability, if you're looking to settle down in some way, what I really feel like is ultimately, especially since the sun is here, this is worth it. Surmounting these obstacles absolutely is worth it. Whatever this obstacle could be, I mean, you could be at a great distance from each other. You could have a lot that you need to handle or deal with in your life before you could settle down in some way, whatever. Whatever the obstacles are, I really do feel like it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it, especially if you're looking to settle down, if you're looking for greater stability. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. So now we're going to close out the reading here with your oracle guidance. All right, last shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got for today. Best message, please, spirit. To close out this reading, oracle guidance for today, Wednesday, August 14th, See what we've got. Oh, I love this card. Goddess Lakshmi and Dendric, and Dendric Agate, her golden grace. And this is a card number 38. So it is an 11. Yes. Yes, indeedly do. Her golden grace. We bring you the empowerment of her golden grace. Divine Mother Lakshmi, who brings blessings of enlightenment and prosperity, beauty and good fortune, smiles upon you now. Open your mind to the reality of divine generosity without limit. Open your heart to feel worthy of her love. When you allow her to grant you bounty, to bless you with her golden grace, she is empowered to shine her divine beauty in the world, to heal, uplift, inspire, and enchant the souls in need. That's beautiful. So open up. Open up to the bounty. I mean, especially since, you know, you really could be releasing a lot of major blockages that have been standing in your way in the past. A lot of false realities. A lot of hollow, I don't know, hollow structures. Things that really don't have any sort of substance or meaning any longer. You're releasing that, letting all of that go. And you're definitely moving in a direction in which great fulfillment is coming. Don't allow the obstacles to stand in your way. You can overcome anything. You really can overcome anything. Especially if what you want is stability, groundedness, abundance. It's not going to come easy. I was watching Sal yesterday of Eat, Read, Love on YouTube, um, and he was talking about how, you know, it was the Pisces reading. 
because in Eastern astrology, my Venus and Jupiter are in Pisces. Um, and so um, I was watching the Pisces reading and it was talking about the Jupiter transit and how, you know, Venus transits come and go like they she transits like crazy so you know relationships come and go but abundance real abundance true wealth and and all that stuff and good luck that doesn't come easy okay Jupiter doesn't transit all that often you know it takes months to do so so true abundance is going to be challenging reaching that is you're going to have to surmount some obstacles but you can do it the Sun okay all right, so there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a great day, to both today and tomorrow. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee for our weekend edition on Friday. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.